Now, unlike Kevin Feige from the MCU, Joe Carnahan does not smear any of his projects with feces and tell you this is the good shit. In fact, if I ever met Joe Carnahan, I would say, stick it right there, bro. I'm Batman. So as you know by now, I'm a massive Joe Carnahan fan. I think the dude can do no wrong. The guy had one of the best films this year, which was Boss Level. And I'm here to talk about Quop Schwap. Now Quop Schwap, which was shot during the pandemic, and they even have a disclaimer at the end credits to prove that. And kudos for them for still being able to make a film like this during such weird times. It's set in a Nevada precinct, which is awesome. And you have separate police cells. In one cell, you've got Gerard Butler behind me. He plays Bobby Vedic, and in the other you got Frank Grillo who plays Teddy Moretto, a pretty useless gangster uh, who's a con artist and yeah he's just not very good at his job. Uh, Keeping the Peace is Valerie Young as played by Alexis Lauder, a great example of how you can make a strong female character without making her a bloody Mary Sue. And of course if you've seen an awful Hawkeye trailer released by Disney Plus today you'll pretty much know why. Yes apparently Steve Rogers is now Hamilton the musical. Now, if you're into 70s cop thrillers, such as The 7-Ups or Roy Scheider, or even Magnum Force from 1973, which, as you know, if you're a film enthusiast like me, was Clint Eastwood's second time playing Dirty Harry Callahan in Magnum Force, whose theme tune is used here for the opening credits. Um, I guess that's because much later on in the movie, we see a, a 44 Magnum bullet, which is referenced by one of the characters. It's a bit of a cheap tie-in, but I kind of get what Joe Carnahan was doing here. And of course, if you want further a reference of the 70s, right behind me, you've got the 70s style font that they use. So you even have Curtis Mayfield and some other soul tracks that I've never heard of, heard of before that find their way into the movie. Now, what I really enjoyed about this film is the chemistry with the main leads. I mean, you've got Gerard Butler and Frank Grillo just exchanging jokes in an organic and naturalistic way. I like the MC which feels need to shove a punchline every five minutes into scenes but here it just works naturally I loved it and also when you can find characters to one setting it's a great way to keep that budget in line with what the film production needs to be, how you can create unique situations, which it does. More importantly, creating tension and drama between the leads. Who do you trust? Who do you not trust? It's one of those. And I really appreciated that about this particular movie. Alexis Lauder, she is fantastic. I think if this film does not make her a bigger star than what she deserves to be, then something is seriously wrong. I thought she, she was a great character. She was never annoying. You kind of saw her side, her perspective on things. And then Gerard Butler and Frank Grillo. Who do you trust out of those two guys? It was a really good guessing game right toward the end, and I really appreciated that. But for me, when it comes to being an, an unhinged psychopath, Toby Huss as Anthony Lamb, he walks away with it. I think for me, he actually steals the film. He was just... He was unhinged without being hammy about it. I mean, there's bits of ham in there from him for sure, but I relished every single moment. And one thing that Joe Carnahan gets right with his film's antagonists, he always gives them enough screen time for you as the audience to either root for them or actually hate them. And yeah, him doing that at the end is just a bit unnerving. It's like, you understand why he does that. And he's a refreshing psychopath because he means what he says and says what he means. He's one of those kind of guys. And I've got to say the action here, it does remind me a lot of Assault on Precinct 13 from 1976. If you've not seen that movie, I think this film here pays a big homage to that in many, many ways. But I've got to say, Carnahan has a real flair for the action. The scenes you can see behind me are just incredibly well filmed. The one thing that Hollywood action films do suffer from, and I've noticed this recently when I've been re-watching classic action films from the late 90s and the early noughties, is that uh, you'll get a character, like whether it's the antagonist or the the protagonist they'll be pointing a gun and then it cuts to the scene of the person just taking a hail of bullets uh, but you never see like everything in one shot like both characters in one frame Joe Carnahan does the hair a few times where you'll see both characters 
in, in one instance, you will see Frank Grillo evading a hail of bullets from Gerard Butler inside a police station. That is pretty well filmed. I've got to say the cinematography here is just a delight to look at. It's set in Nevada. So I guess Nevada is an ample opportunity to get some real scenic moments and you do get to have those visions fulfilled here, which I really appreciated. So some great action towards the end. I absolutely loved it, but also you do get action in the first half. It, that, I think the, that Carnahan gets so right, and he did this in boss level as well, is that not, not at one point in this movie does the narrative start to sag, or you're looking at your watch and thinking, when is the next big thing happening? You're so caught up in the dialogue and what's gonna happen next, it is fantastic. Could there be a sequel to this film? Well, there could be if you wanted to be. I don't think Joe Carnahan will go there because kind of what you see is what you get, and I love that. I mean, even right to the very end, that thing about who do you trust, who do you not trust, it comes up again. I did like the way the film ended because it, it was very ambiguous. Um, the heavy use of 70 soul music, stuff I've never heard of before. I'm pretty sure one of the guys at the end singing was Curtis Mayfield. Um, that was pretty cool because I don't know what the track was. So that was kind of new to me. I've got to say, man, Butler and Grillo, uh, they need to make some more films together. They, they were great. Obviously, Grillo's got a great working relationship with Joe Carnahan anyway, and I want to see those two make more films like this in the future. To me, Carnahan feels like an indie film director because in the sea of superhero shit that we've got right now, they seem to have overtaken everything you forget that films like this exist. And this kind of feels like what indie films are still trying to do now. They're trying to be seen. They're trying to get, they're trying to get out there so the masses can also look at what films are all about. Look, for me, being a film enthusiast is not just looking at AAA titles. It's like looking at AA and single A stuff too. I used to watch indie films in the 90s and the early noughties, and I'm getting back to doing that now because I've kind of forgotten about what those films meant to me when I was growing up in those times. So guys, if you enjoy this film today, and by the way, I would give this easily an eight out of 10. It's a fantastic movie. The rating will probably get even higher after repeated viewings. So if you enjoyed my review today, folks, for a co-op show up, do smash that like button below. Do hit that subscribe button right in the old macaroni, and I'll see you on my next review. You can run, but you can't hide!